You've got a nice melody, you've got a nice drum pattern, you've got a great sound and bass, but when you put it all together, uh, it just kind of sounds too repetitive and not engaging enough. So the issue here is not with your sound choices or your melody, but with your song structure. How you arrange those various elements into a song. So that is exactly what we are going to be covering in this video. Arrangements in music production. So first of all, what is music arrangement? Music arrangement simply involves organizing and structuring the different parts of a song to create a cohesive and engaging musical piece. Music arrangement in general is very, very important to us as music producers because we create music for people to actually listen to. And if it's not well arranged, well, people might actually start, but stop halfway because it's just, uh, you know, it's just there. So our goal with music arrangement is not just to create something that sounds good on its own, but to create a masterpiece that takes them on a journey. And there are different ways to achieve this and different rules you hear out there. But the truth is, none of these rules is the best way and none of these rules is the only way. But these are just principles that once you follow them, you are sure to get a good result. So right now, I'm going to be playing one of my songs for you guys. Who am I? Yes that is the title of the song there is a link in the description to the full song on spotify with the vocals but right here we're just going to be focusing on the instrumental and i'm going to be explaining each section for you and the arrangement choices i had to make so first at the beginning right here we have the intro So you notice that a lot of songs out there have their intros last for around four to eight bars. This has eight bars, okay? But that doesn't stop you from going longer or going shorter. And also, depending on the genre of music you're going for, some genres just tend to have longer intros. Like I can remember listening to some Ama Piano songs and the intro just kept on going and going. And I'm like, start the song! But yeah, some genres of music can influence how long your intro should be. And next up right here, we have the verse 1. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a verse that comes after the intro, okay? It can actually be a chorus, but in this our case, is the verse that comes next. Okay, so we have that right there. Now, one thing you're going to notice is every eight bars, there was a change. So first of all, four, we have the intro for eight bars. Okay, then we have the first half of the first one for eight bars. And then we have the second half of the verse for another eight bars. It's like a step. Okay, first of all, you have the intro, then you have the verse one, which adds some um, new sounds, the drums comes in, okay? And then you have the second half of the verse again, where some new instruments also come in. Now, you might hear some rules regarding to this, um, when you hear about the eight bar rule or the rule of three, all these are just kind of saying the same thing. So this first four bars, I repeated it twice, and that's where the eight bar rule comes in. And also the way the rule of three explains it is that first time when you play a particular melody for the first time, it sounds new in the in the listener's ear. Then when you play it again for the second time, it kind of places a stamp on that sound where they are not kind of familiar with the sound in a way. All right. But when you now play it again for the third time, it becomes like uh, they want something new, they kind of hunger for something more. Like I said, these are just principles. So it doesn't necessarily have to be every eight bar that you change, that you add something new. It can be first of all eight bars, then every four bars you add something new. It can be every four bars you add something new. It can be the first four bars, the first two four bars, and then the last eight bars is kind of the same. So just kind of experiment and try something new. And remember, the goal is not just to change every eight bars, but to keep your listeners engaged. And that's why making something new for your audience to listen to is very, very important. 
And by something new, I have to emphasize it. It doesn't just mean you have to be adding something new every time. In this case, yes, we, like I said, it was like a step. It started slow, then added more instrument, then added more instruments. But in your case, you might not necessarily have to go for this pattern. Now, instead of adding something new, you could be taking away. Okay, you could be removing something from the, like, let's say the first eighth bars, there was a drum and the second eighth bars, you remove the drum beat, just leave the melody alone. Okay, you could be creating a whole new beat entirely. Just create something new, entirely different from the first eighth bars. In some cases, you might use the same sound, different chords and pattern. So in other cases, you might use the same pattern, but different sounds, okay? And also, you can also use some mixing effects. You can add like a low pass filter, you can add a high pass filter, you can add a reverb, you can add a delay. delay. All these are just examples of what I mean by when I say something new for your audience to listen to. And then next up here, we have the pre-chorus. Okay. All right, so you can see right here, I didn't add something now. It's no longer a step motion, like I went way down at this point. So like I said, you don't necessarily have to always be adding something. You can see I took away a whole lot at this point. The drums and everything just went away. And then at this point, I also added some mixing effects, like what I was talking about, like adding some mixing effects, like a low pass, just to add something different. So next up, we have the chorus right here. Okay, you saw what I did there, all right? After every eight bars, I added something new. And then right here, we have the verse two. And now what you would notice, okay, is that verse 2 and verse 1, they are very, very similar, but they are not the same. Alright, so you notice in verse 2, the bass and the 808 are kind of gone. And it's not a must, you must do this, but sometimes you might want to make the verse 1 different, a little bit different from the verse 2. It can actually be entirely different, okay? In some cases, it might just be a whole new beat entirely, or just a whole new arrangement entirely for the verse 2. And sometimes you might actually just take a duplicate of the verse 1 and put it in verse 2. But in this case, as you can see, it was just a subtle change. I just took out the bass and just left the drum and that melody pattern that is hitting at the top. So the same thing we did again after eight bars added something new all right and then we also have the pre-chorus again right here okay the pre-chorus and the chorus are the same so i'm not going to play that but I extended the chorus for another eight bars. And you notice that I also added something new right here. So I'm gonna start from halfway midway the chorus, okay?
it. So you notice, even if it was still the same cross, since I was extending it for another eight bars, because it's the end, I just wanted to extend the cross a little bit more, I still added something new. And it's very, very subtle. You might actually not even notice it that much, but it is still different. All right, so no matter how small the difference is, it actually makes a difference. And at the end here, we have the outro, which is just basically ending the whole song entirely. Alright guys, that'll be it for this video. Please, if you did like this video and you learned a lot from this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to this channel and also enable notifications so that you don't miss out on future videos when I post them. Thanks guys for watching this video and see you in the next one.